So here we are. I'm going to be installing Horizon View and going to be installing the the Horizon View connector server portion, which is the first part that you deploy is the connection server. And this is Horizon 7. So here I am on a Windows uh, 2012 R2 server that I'm going to make my connection server. Uh, one important note to add, you'll see in the installation and configuration guide that you need to make sure, especially when you're going to be doing also a security server, which we'll show, you want to make sure that the firewall is on. A part of the setup between the connection server and the security server as a part of security needs to set up a firewall rule to where only those two can talk to each other. So you need to make sure that both on your connection server and your security server before you do the installs is to make sure that your Windows firewall is on. That way as a part of the install, it will go ahead and create those associated firewall rules and um, put them into place for you. So as you see here, like I said, uh, my Windows firewall is on already. This is my connection server. Also, the obviously, the connection server anyway must be on the domain. However, your security server does not need to be on the domain, and typically you don't want it to be. So just as a little FY there. So let's get started with the install. So here's the view connection server install. Go ahead and open that. And then we're going to hit run. And then we're going to go ahead and click next. Of course, we're going to accept the EULA agreement, hit next. And we're going to accept the default location in the program files to where to install it. Being that this is the very first deployment and this is the connection server, we're going to go ahead and do the Horizon 7 standard server. Uh, depending on your, if you have larger deployments and multiple locations where you're going to get into maybe replica servers, enrollment server, and you also have the security server portion. And this is what we'll do for the security server. Now I am doing IP version four, so I'll leave that the same. And I do also want to install the HTML access. So then that way you can access your Horizon View desktops via an HTML5 browser. So we're going to click next. And we're going to have a data recovery password that we want to do. So we're going to set that. And I'm not going to do a reminder. Hit next. OK, and this is where I was talking about with the Windows Firewall. Again, if you have the Windows Firewall already turned on, we want to select Configure the uh, Windows Firewall automatically. I highly recommend that you just do this. It's much easier than having to do it manually. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. And here, I'm just going to use my normal domain administrator account to uh, use for my Horizon View admin portal. I'm not going to participate in the user experience program, so I'm going to uncheck that. That's up to you. Hit Next, and then I'm going to hit Install. So as you see, initially deploying the connection server, which is the first phase of setting up Horizon View, pretty simple, and it doesn't take too long. And we're almost done with the install here. This has to tie up a few last things at the very end, like anything else. As you see, it already created the desktop icon for the Horizon 7 administrator. OK, so now the installer finished. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the show me the readme file because I don't care to look at it and click finish. Now from here, uh, we can go ahead and we can open up the Horizon administration uh, console. OK, so we had finished the install of the connection server. And I went ahead, I rebooted the server. And I went ahead and launched the view administrator from the desktop icon. And it's asking me to log in now. And you know, during the install, I used my domain admin account for my Active Directory uh, administrator account as an authorized administrator for it. So that's what I'm going to log in with. So I'm going to log into the view administrator. Now keep in mind the first time um, that you do launch the view administrator after you've installed the software, it will take a little bit to initially load the first time. And then you'll need to also um, get past the, it'll warn you about the certificate, obviously. Then eventually it will load the screen to the login. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to go ahead and edit the license. OK, so I've entered the license in here and now I have a valid license for concurrent users. Uh, everything's enabled, so we're good to go from a licensing standpoint. I always like to do that first. 
And then if we go down to under inventory and then view configuration, we're going to go to servers. And you see here you have the tab for the vCenter servers. And then you also have the security server and the connection server. So as you see, it sees itself the connection server. Uh, PC over IP is installed. It's enabled. But let's go back to the vCenter server tab. And we're going to go ahead and add the vCenter server for my environment. Okay, so we're going to enter in our, either our, our IP or FQDN, fully qualified domain name, of our vCenter server. Our username that has administrative rights on the vCenter server as well as the password. And then we can go ahead and keep all the other defaults here and really no reason to change any of those. We're going to click next. Okay, and then at this point, you know, it's going to give you an invalid certificate detected. You're going to view the certificate. And then you're going to go ahead and accept it. And at this time, I'm not going to use View Composer. Uh, View Composer is uh, another Windows server that you'd have to deploy and install the Composer uh, piece onto it, along with the database. And that's for doing linked clones. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip that and click Next. OK. So now we're at the storage part. Um, we can go ahead and click the box for reclaiming VM disk space, which is not a bad idea. Also, you can enable the view storage accelerator, which is uh, enabled by default, and the cache size of 1024 meg. We can show all hosts here. And use, I'm just going to use the defaults, and we're going to go ahead and click Next. And then this is just a summary screen you can use. And then we'll go ahead and click Finish. And there we go. Now we're showing our vCenter server. And we're showing green check marks across the board, which is good. Now then from here, um, we can go up to Users and Groups. And if we had some desktops set up, uh, we can go ahead and set up some entitlements. So for right now, let's just go down to Global Settings. And we can go into the general settings and click edit. So as an example here, you know, we can do the administrator uh, timeout. Uh, you can also forcibly disconnect users after so many minutes. Single sign-on is enabled by default. Um, you can also do other different kinds of uh, clients. You can also do a different type of uh, SSO configurations as well that you can enable here. Uh, you can enable automatic status updates. You can log in a uh, pre-login message such as welcome to your clause domain or something like that. Uh, you can display a warning before they're forcibly logged off five minutes before. Uh, this here is an important one to know about. If you're looking to run a Windows Server OS as a desktop, for, as a view desktop, you do need to check that. Um, you can also check this box here for cleanup credentials when tab is closed for HTML access, which is not a bad idea as well. Now, if you're using a Mirage server uh, for image management, then you would also put that in there. So pretty basic settings there, uh, not too much. Uh, you can play around with them a little bit and uh, adjust them accordingly and click OK. Now, from a security perspective, we can go in here. We can check the box, reauthenticate secure tunnel connections after a network interrupt. So that's usually not a bad idea. Uh, also enable IPsec for security server pairing, which we are going to want to do. Like I said, we are setting up and making sure that we have the firewall. So and when we installed the connection server software, we went ahead and said, yes, please configure that firewall role. So good idea to leave that as is and click OK. Now we can go down to administrators. So again, the administrator on my domain is automatically a administrator for the view administration, as well as you can go in and you can look at different groups. 
permissions. Uh, you can add an access group. You can also play around with the different roles as well as create some different roles that are specific to your needs as well. So we're just going to leave that as is right now. If you're doing thin apt applications, this is where you'd add the repository and get that set up to work. If you were looking at a multi-site environment, a horizon view, and you're doing cloud pod architecture, you would set that up here. And then event configuration. You can also uh, deploy a Windows server that has a database on it to where you can also direct all your event logs for all your view desktops as well as the connection server and everything else to there. As far as a syslog server, we're going to go ahead and add that because I do have a vRealize log insight server. There we go. Click OK. Now that's in there so that way it'll direct all the logs directly to my log insight server. You can also send the logs to a file um, and then you can dump it to a location. You can figure that, but I'm going to leave that as is. If you're doing instant clones, you can set up here instant clone domain admins. Again, not going to do that. Then we have policies and we have one master global policy where you know we can go in and edit these policies such as multimedia redirection, USB access, PC over IP, hardware acceleration, and the priority. So pretty basic settings there. And under monitoring, we just have events and sessions that we can look at. Now under resources, we have farms here where we can create a farm, again, for bigger environments, such as a Microsoft RDSH or remote desktop farm. We can do that. Uh, once we start adding virtual machines uh, for desktops, you'll see them showing up here. Then if you have any virtual desktops with persistent disks, they would show up here. Under the catalog, you're also going to do some configuration for ThinApp here. Uh, your application pools as well. If you're doing some virtualized applications, you would set that up here and then your desktop pools would be here. So that's just a general overview of the initial configuration. Now we can go into much further detail configuring pools with desktops, but for right now, that's just the uh, basic configuration to initially get you up and started. Next, we're going to connect our security server. So going back down to servers, go to the connection server, and click on that connection server, and then we're going to go to more commands. We're going to specify a security server pairing password. So we're going to set that password, and it's only good for a certain amount of time. I'm going to leave it at the default 30 minutes, so that's done. So now I'm over on my security server. As you see here, just as a reminder, it's in a work group, not on the domain. For security purposes, that's what you want. Also, I do have the Windows firewall on, so I can configure that. And then here's the connection install, which is the same for doing the security server. So we're going to launch that. Okay, so now that we've kicked that off, we're going to go ahead and click run, just like we did before on the connection server. So yes, it's the same piece of software that we used on the connection server, just going to select the different server to actually install. Okay, so we're going to click next. We're going to accept the EULA agreement. We're going to accept the default location and the program files. And here we're going to select the security server. So we're going to select the security server IP version 4 is what I'm using. I'm going to do next. It doesn't take too long to get that going. Okay, and here we're going to put in the connection server. Hit next. Then the password, the pairing password that we put in on the connection server side, we're going to put that in. Hit next. Again, make sure you do it within the time frame. Otherwise, you have to go back and uh, re-enable that again and put the password in again. So here we have the security server configurations. We're going to set up the external URL. So this is a demo environment. So I'm not really going to be uh, setting this all up for external access. But if it was a production environment and you were doing that, you would obviously have created an external address to uh, 
for users to connect to. So you would put that in here. And then for PC over IP external URL as the IP address of the security server with 4172 for the port. And then for blast external URL, it is going to be um, the security server with 8443. So again, we're going to configure the Windows firewall between the connection server and the security server automatically and click install. So as you see, just like the connection server, it's pretty straightforward and basic configuring this. Not much to it at all. Most of the configuration comes to play within the view administrator. Okay, so that finished up, and like before, I'm not going to bother looking at the readme file. I'm going to click finish. Now, just as a good practice, I always like to reboot after doing any type of in Windows install. Um, it may not be necessary, um, but again, just out of uh, good habits, I like to uh, go ahead and do a reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and restart this security server. And I'm going to pause the recording for now. So I've gone back over to our connection server. I have clicked on the security server tabs. And now after doing the reboot of the security server, you see that the security server now shows up uh, successfully in the uh, view administrator. So we've successfully attached to the vCenter server. The connection server shows good. And now we've connected to the security server and done all the initial configurations. Okay, so after we've done the initial configuration of the view administrator, uh, now the first step is to get a view desktop pool created. I had to create a virtual desktop, so I went ahead and I created a Windows 7 virtual desktop. I've uh, added it to the domain already, I obviously got it on the network. I've also gone ahead and uploaded the, the OS optimization tool which is great for making settings uh, to help with a virtual desktop, uh, which is very different than a physical desktop. So this is a tool that VMware has provided to help you for view desktops and to do some optimization on it. And then also we have to install the agent on the Windows 7 desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install the agent. So then that way the connection server can recognize and see this particular desktop and that'll allow me to add it to a pool and make it accessible. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. I'm gonna accept the uh, EULA agreement, hit next. And we're doing IP version four. So we're gonna click next. Now, if you're going to use a by default, USB direction is turned off as well as the instant clone agent. I'm not going to be doing instant clones. USB redirection, you know, let's let's say uh, we may use it. So we're going to go ahead and enable that. And then if you're going to use scanner, smart cards, serial ports, flash redirection, anything like that, you can also do that. So for this purpose, I'm just going to go ahead with those and click next. And we're going to click install. As you see here, the program runs pretty quickly, just like it did with the connection server, but even a little quicker. And now the agent installer has finished, so click finish. Now you should do a reboot, but I'm going to click no for right now. I do want to run the optimization tool real quick. I had previously started running it, so some of the optimizations have already been changed already. So I'm going to go ahead and rerun it again now that I got the uh, Horizon View agent on here because it was looking for that to make some adjustments in that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and rerun the optimization tool. So it does a quick analyzation of it. As you see, most of it's green because of setting and running the optimization tool previously to running the agent. As you see, most of it has in the blue here, it's already been optimized. There are a few things that have not been optimized yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click optimize just to get those last couple of items. But I highly recommend that you do this for any virtual desktops because there's a lot of things such as screensaver, um, power settings and stuff like that that you don't want on for a virtual desktop. So this takes care of all of them in one fell swoop. Um, you can also do this by doing 
Active Directory group policy settings as well. So uh, anyway, so we went ahead and we ran that. I'm going to close that off. And now I'm going to restart the desktop. And I'll pause the video in the meantime. OK, so as you see here, the Windows 7 desktop is back up and running now. So let's go back over to the connection server. OK, now that we're in the Horizon Administrator, we're going to go ahead and create a um, what I'm going to do is create a dedicated pool for that particular desktop, just to show you an example of creating a desktop pool. So under catalog, we have desktop pools, which is where I'm at now. We're going to go ahead and click add. And because it's just going to be dedicated to that one virtual machine, uh, that Windows 7 virtual machine that we just created, I'm going to go ahead and create a manual desktop pool because it's just going to be for that one. So I'm going to click Next. It's going to be dedicated. And I'm going to go ahead and enable automatic assignment as well to it. Floating, again, there is a pool of Windows desktops. And when you go to log in, it will just assign you any particular desktop which is in that pool. So um, again, we're going to do a dedicated one because this one particular desktop in this single dedicated pool is what we're looking to accomplish. So we're going to click Next. And I want to be able to uh, grab virtual machines and specifically desktops from my virtual center server. So we're going to click next and keep it on there. There's my virtual center. I only have the one, so that's the one I want. I'm going to click next. And we're going to give uh, basically a name to the pool. The ID, just to let you know, you can't have any spaces or anything in it. So you have to either use dashes or um, no space at all. And then the, then you have the display name. You can put spaces and make it a little more friendlier name if you choose to and put it in the description. But I'm just going to leave it at this. I'm going to go next. Okay, now we have some settings here. Under general here, we have the state, which is enabled, connection server redirections. Don't need to worry about that. Remote settings, remote machine power policy take no action is an option ensure machine is always powered on now being this is going to be my desktop as administrator i'm going to want to make sure that this desktop is always running so that way if say i lose power the host re reboots it will automatically kick this machine off and start it then we have automatically log off after a disconnect uh, i would go ahead and say yes for security purposes immediately, or maybe you can just do after, say, 10 minutes. We'll do that. Allow users to uh, reset their machines. Since this is mine, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but for general users, you may select and not do that, so they can't power off their virtual machine. And then the default display protocol. It can be either Microsoft RDP, PC over P, or VMware Blast. Let's go ahead and and do VMware Blast. Allow users to choose a protocol, yes. 3D rendering, you can, depending on the type of, if you have, say, hardware acceleration cards for video, such as NVIDIA Grid, you would select that. Or you can do software hardware, depending, again, on what you have. But you can also put this as automatic. There's also some settings you can do by clicking Configure here for more detail as far as the VRAM size. But we're just going to leave that the same. Max number of monitors, two, which is good. For the max resolution, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it at the max of 1680 by 1050 because I like a higher res. HTML access, typically I want to do that. That's why I can connect to it via an HTML5 browser and don't have to use the Horizon View client. And for Adobe Flash quality and throttling, uh, you can leave this as the same, or obviously you can make different adjustments depending on what your particular uh, policies are. Keep in mind with Flash, you want to be careful because if you set this to where the settings are high, it can bog down your bandwidth if a lot of your users are doing a lot of Flash. And so I recommend being very cautious with those settings. And then there's a checkbox here for overriding global Mirage settings. Mirage is for image management for both physical and virtual machines. But we're not using Mirage, so we don't need to worry about that. So we're going to click Next. Now here we're going to select virtual machine I want to put in to this particular desktop dedicated pool, which is going to be mine. I'm going to click Add and click Next. 
And then usually most people like to use the view storage accelerator and use the default seven days. Something you want to look into, read up on a little bit as far as whether you want to do it, uh, how many days you want to keep that um, and would like it to be regenerated. Again, the default is seven. You can also do blackout times. Uh, again, not really going to get into that. And transparent page sharing scope. You can see here, it can either go by the virtual machine, the desktop pool, a pod, or globally. But we're going to leave that as default. Click Next. You still have to entitle users to the desktop in the pool or to the pool itself. So typically what you want to do is you want to check this box so you can do it right after you click Finish here. So we're going to click Finish, and you're going to see it's going to come up, and we're going to go ahead and entitle users to this desktop pool and associated desktops. So I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to just put my uh, personal account in here and click Find. And I unchecked groups because that way it doesn't bother checking groups as well. A little bit quicker to find. And again, I'm connected to Active Directory. so And then click OK. and click close. Now, as you see here, I've created this desktop pool called tSandy DSK. Uh, display name is the same. It is a manual desktop pool. The source is from vCenter. User assignment is dedicated. Again, vCenter server. There's one individual that is entitled, and that was myself. And as you see, it's enabled. Now, as you see, there's no sessions currently because I haven't connected to it. So it is that simple to create a desktop pool. And this is as far as I was going to go. Again, this was just meant to be an initial install, initial configuration of Horizon View and the View Administrator. And just to kind of show you the basics of a desktop pool, I'm not going to get into all the details of creating all sorts of different types of pools and creating instant clones and any of those detail type configurations. This was just meant to be a good solid overview to get you started. So hopefully this was a helpful demo for you on how easy it is to install and configure Horizon 7 so that you can run a VDI or virtual desktop infrastructure environment with VMware's Horizon View solution. So again, thank you for joining me today and I hope this was very helpful to you.